Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Panda family. In this video, I'll be deriving transmission line equations and based on transmission line equations, one can identify parameters of transmission line like characteristic impedance, propagation constant, phase constant, attenuation constant, reflection coefficient and VSWR. So to understand all those parameters, you need to know transmission line equations. Here I'll be deriving those equations of transmission line. So here you can observe with transmission line equivalent circuit is having four components, resistive component, inductive component, capacitive component and transconductive component. To understand this equivalent circuit, you just go through my last video in which I have explained all the fundamentals related to this equivalent circuit. Here I am considering small differential length as a delta Z instead of delta L. So here you can observe we have resistive element that is R into delta Z. Here we have inductive element that is L into delta Z. Here we have capacitive element that is C into delta Z. And here we have transconductive element that is G into delta Z. To understand transmission line equations, first of all, we need to understand how much potential drop and how much current drop is happening across transmission line. So here if I say we have voltage that is V1 and if I say here we have voltage that is V2, then voltage drop across this transmission line will be V2 minus V1. Here V2 value that is lower than V1, right? And if you want to understand current drop, then here entering current, let us say that is I1 and leaving current that is I2, then current drop across this transmission line is I2 minus I1. To derive transmission line equations, first of all, I'll be taking voltage drop across this transmission line. Voltage drop across transmission line delta V, that is V2 minus V1, right? That is V2 minus V1 and V2 minus V1 that is negative. Why it is negative? The reason is V2 is lower than V1. So V2 minus V1 that is negative and as per KVL, see voltage drop that is happening across R and L component. So here across R, it will be R delta Z into current passing through this that is I1 plus across L, it will be L di by dt. So here L delta Z into d i by dt. Here current i is i1 over here. So d i1 by dt that I need to write. Now to simplify this further, what I'll be doing is I'll be taking delta z common and I'll be dividing it over here. So delta v divided by delta z that will be minus of. Now see here delta z that we have took common and we have divided it over here. So inside bracket we will be having r and I'll be taking i1 common as well. So plus L into D by DT into I1 over here. So this is first equation. Now to understand second equation, I'll be taking current drop. So that is I2 minus I1. Current drop is delta I that is I2 minus I1. And here if you observe I2 that is lower than I1. The reason is through this C and G there is current drop. So I2 minus I1 that will be negative over here. And as per KCL, you can identify current passing through transconductive component and current passing through capacitive component. Through transconductive component, current drop is G into delta Z into voltage across it. Voltage across this is V2, right? Plus current drop across this capacitive element that is C dV by dt. Here C is C delta Z into dV by dt where V is V2 over here, right? Now to simplify this further, I'll be taking delta Z common and here I'll be writing delta I by delta Z by taking delta Z common from here. So here we will be having minus into G and here V2 that also I'm taking common. So here I'm writing G plus C into D by DT and here I'm multiplying V2 over here. So that is how we have two equations, right? Let us say this is equation number one and this is 
equation number two. Now, what I'll be doing is I'll be writing these two equations in form of V and I only. The reason is we are a little bit to understand how variation in current and voltage is happening. So let us write equation one and equation two in form of voltage and current. So now we will be having this equation that is dv by dz that is equals to minus of r plus l into d by dt of i. So instead of delta v by delta z, I am writing that in form of differentiation and instead of i1, I am writing that in form of i only. And the second equation that is d i by dz that is equals to minus of g plus c into d by dt into v. Here I am writing delta i by delta z as a differentiation of current with respect to z and this v2 is v over here. Let us say this is equation 3 and this is equation 4. To simplify this further, we will be considering d by dt as a j omega. So now here, see this d by dt that is j omega. So here we will be having j omega l into i will be there. And in second equation also, we will be substituting d by dt as a j omega. So you can observe now equation is getting modified as per these equations. Let us say this is equation pi and this is equation 6. Now using this equation pi and equation 6, we can derive transmission line equation. See transmission line equation that is there in form of double differentiation of voltage and double differentiation in form of current. So here I'll be deriving transmission line equation for voltage based on that one can have it in terms of current even. So let us consider equation pi that is there in form of differentiation of voltage and to have double differentiation, we will be differentiating this equation pi with respect to z. So now we will be having equation pi that is getting differentiated with respect to z. So here we will be having d square v by dz square that is equals to minus of r plus j omega l. And here we need to differentiate i with respect to z. So it will be di by dz. Now, if you observe di by dz, that is minus g plus j omega c into v, let us substitute that over here. So, we will be having d square v by dz square, that will be, now see minus minus plus, and now we will be having r plus j omega l into g plus j omega c, and here we will be having voltage now. So, if you observe this equation carefully, so that is transmission line equation. Let me note it down. Equation, let us say A. Then equation A is transmission line equation. And it is there in form of wave equation. Let me explain you how. See wave equation, that is d square v by dz square, that is equals to gamma square into v, where gamma is propagation constant. So this is what similar to wave equation you can observe where gamma is propagation constant and value of gamma is how much that is square root of r plus j omega l into g plus j omega c gamma square is this so gamma will be square root of r plus j omega l into g plus j omega c right so that is how transmission line equation is there with us. And to understand how wave propagation is happening, you need to resolve this equation. So solution of this equation that is resulting into incident signal and reflected signal. Let me explain you how. Solution of this equation that is V1 into e to the power minus gamma z plus V2 into e to the power plus gamma z. That is what the solution which is there with this equation, right? And if you carefully observe this equation, then with this equation, we have two terms. One term belongs to V1 and second term belongs to V2. See, with this V1 term, what will happen? With this V1 term, if you increase the distance Z, 
then e to the power value will increase in denominator means if you increase the distance z then in total component will decrease and here if you increase the distance z then in total component will increase right so you can say this is incident signal and this is reflected signal so solution is resulting into incident signal and reflected signal with transmission line right and this is what we can have for voltage same thing that you can derive based on this equation phi and equation 6 with respect to current as well if you want solution with current then current i will be i1 into e to the power minus gamma z plus i2 into e to the power plus gamma z where this is incident signal and this is reflected signal now i'll be explaining you how this incident and reflected waves that is appearing with transmission line so here we have transmission line you can observe and see here we have supply and here we have load with this transmission line we will be applying signal in this direction right so here we will be having incident signal with this transmission line and that incident signal is how much it will be v1 e to the power minus gamma z right it will be v1 into e to the power minus gamma z so as signal is going in this direction its value will decrease right and here because of mismatch due to load over here there will be reflection of signal and what is that reflected signal that reflected signal is v2 into e to the power plus gamma z right so that is how we can have incident and reflected signal based on transmission line equation and using this transmission line equation using this transmission line equation in future coming videos i'll be explaining you parameters of transmission line like characteristic impedance calculation reflection coefficient calculation propagation constant calculation attenuation constant calculation as well as phase constant calculation so all those parameters calculation that i'll be explaining you in next coming videos which is based on this transmission line equation only i hope you have understood this still if anything that i'd like to share just note it down in comment section i'll be happy to help you thank you so much for watching this video